Oh, you would have been so proud of me this weekend. I played touch footy on the weekend. I sold an absolute beautiful dummy that you would have you would have loved. I did the the full the one handed turn around like that. Oh, and then that yeah, not a cutter dummy, a cutter like, like a, just like a one hand back like that, and then bang, back around. Gone. Oh. It was a thing of beauty. <laughs> it was a thing of beauty. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Oh, talented mate. Yeah, but it touch the touch footy field is where I belong. Exactly, you know. Yeah. Take that contact out of it. And yeah, I've been injured fight. too many times. You know, go. Yeah, too uh, many injuries. I haven't got any answers, for this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, Grand Final Parramatta Final. versus Battle of the West. You picked it. Yeah. Yep, I did. South, South, South were in it for a little bit, and they disappeared. Yeah. Uh, I'm more disappointed with the Cowboys blowing that one. But I, yeah, oh, the Eels were lucky with that non-forward pass. Yeah. Forward pass. Yeah. Mitchell knows us. Tom Brady of the NRL. Oh, right. I don't know. He hasn't won enough to be Tom Brady of the NRL. Uh, uh, that'd be, that'd, if anyone... Good on, we, James Winston, maybe? We'll give him that. Uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Because cause he made it through to like a championship game. I'd say he'd Mate, be... Right. he'd be <laughs> No, he'd be like... He'd be like the Josh Allen of the of the NRL where he's had such... He's got such big expectations on him. Hasn't won anything. Hasn't won anything. Yeah, fair hasn't won anything. Yeah, like, I don't want that. I don't know who else you could sort of... Compare to. Maybe the... Maybe the Baker Mayfield, but he hasn't, he hasn't crashed that hard. You know what I mean? No, he hasn't. Like he's still a decent, good enough player. Yeah, like yeah, you need he's like a good shit. player who hasn't won anything. Uh, Not Joe Burrow. I wouldn't insult him like that. Um, I think Matt Ryan could be the one. It'd be, has, he hasn't had a oh, he hasn't, hasn't had a choke. Choke. Yeah, he hasn't had a choke. If if he chokes his grand final away, he'd be the Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Although I think I think he's the Josh Allen because he's gotten through to the. Championship game, but he hasn't won. He hasn't um, won, yeah, because he hasn't been to a final four. Yeah, this is his first one that he's going to. Josh Allen hasn't been to a Super Bowl. Yet. I'm just trying to think who else he could possibly live. like. Who? I mean, Mark Sanchez who got to the AC Championship game, <laughs> never made it to the Super Bowl. I'm just trying to think who's made it to the Championship game but not gone to the Super Bowl. That's, no, but we want him to go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but there, was, there has been a Super Bowl that hasn't won. Colin Kaepernick, the NRL. <laughs> Jesus, he's about to make a real statement. Then, yeah. So, um, uh, no, who's, who's been there that hasn't won? So we go through the last ones, right? Joe Burrow didn't win, and before that, Pat Mahomes didn't win, but Matt, Pat Mahomes has won before. Okay. Then before that, Pat Mahomes, who did Mahomes be? Jimmy Garoppolo. He could be the Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, he's, got the, he's got the he's handsomeness. Got the look, yeah, the he's look. The, yeah, I, I like that. That's a good one as well. The like. Jimmy Garoppolo of the, the NRL. Yeah. Jimmy G's back in the driver's seat, maybe with Trey Lance getting injured. So, and Mitchell Moses, we never know. If Mitchell Moses takes him to glory. Yeah. Then, then, then we'll, we'll, then we'll, we'll put all our money onto Jimmy G to take yeah. Shirley San Fran to. Yeah. <laughs> he earns a shit ton of money every time they win a game. That is an incredible way. He gets three, three, it's 250000 a game that he starts, a hundred, an extra 100000 for a win. Yeah. And then and then there's more incentives beyond that. But if he, if he wins 10 games this year, it's $3.5 million. I mean, that's not huge, crazy quarterback money, but it's pretty decent payday for a backup yeah, quarterback. Exactly. For a backup, yeah. All right, let's get into it. I'll probably include that now. (laughs) Hello and welcome back to That Rugby League Podcast brought to you by the Sports Booth. Hey. Uh, probably our second to last version of this podcast for, for at least a little while until the Rugby World Cup. Yeah, yeah. That won't, I mean, that won't be that far away. Oh, no, be, when does it kick off? I, I don't know, but it won't be that Four to five long. weeks, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, great final coming up. Yeah. Battle of the West. Who? Hughesy called it. Yep, I did. I finally got something right in these finals. <laughs> um, yeah, one of my colleagues is a mad para fan, and she was asking me, has there ever been a para vs Panda grand final? And there hasn't, so... Yeah, uh, I think I said last podcast that if it's a Paravis Penrith uh, grand final, the entire entirety of Western Sydney between Paramount and Penrith is going to become a, a war zone. Um, so we're still waiting for that to happen, but I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> uh, the, the day of, I'm sure it will be. Though. I'm thinking they've got a demilitarized zone in the, in the middle somewhere there. Yeah. Like the, the, the New South, lots of them North and South Korea, you know. Yeah. I feel like the New South Wales government have gone, yeah, no, we're not letting people well, pass this. The, the interesting <laughs> thing is this, right? The grand final is going to be played in in Sydney City, right? At the... Um, Alliance. At the, at the at Alliance. Is it Alliance or is Alliance. it... Alliance. Either way. That's why tickets went so fast, man, yeah. because there wasn't many going around. Yeah, so they, they're in the... It's in Sydney City. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, to get back to Penrith, you've got to travel basically through Parramatta-ish, right? So if Penrith lose, 
all the Parramatta fans are going back through Parramatta, Parramatta's going to get raised to the ground. Oh, yeah. Right. And, but if Parramatta lose, it's not so bad because Penrith will just drive through and give everyone the finger or something. Yeah, that's the issue, though. It'll <laughs> only be half burnt to the ground. Yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, look, it's going to be a great game, but I guess we should recap how we got there. Um, so our first game, um, and, and both games with their share of controversy, but the first game, Parramatta versus the Cowboys. Look, it was a standout performance from a couple of players not named Mitch Moses, which we previously said Parramatta can't win unless Mitch Moses is, is in the game and performing. He didn't have his greatest game, and the rest of Parramatta stepped up around him. And it's understandable that Mitch Moses didn't have his best game, So I'm sure as everyone has heard by now. He missed the birth of his first child. He, he, he didn't miss it. He FaceTimed it. But he wasn't able to be there <laughs> in person for the birth of his first child. And I will say here, for all the angry people commenting on Facebook, this is with the full consent and agreement of his partner, right? He didn't just say, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going up to, to North Queensland, you can have the kid without me. They agreed to it together, as couples do, you know, that's that, that's what happens in... No one else's business, really. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens in healthy relationships, you discuss and talk things between you. Uh, but yeah, he faced under, and he lost his, his grandmother early in the week and things like that, so it's been a tumultuous week for him, uh, and yet they still managed to pull out a win. Sean Lane... Um, the giraffe managed uh, managed to be pretty impressive in that game as well. Um, but Regan Campbell Gillard, I think, really stepped up. Really wants to wear an Australian jersey, I think. And really, I think this game against Penrith is going to be big for him because, as we all know, former Panthers player. Some stories out there that he wasn't selected for New South Wales because he didn't get along with the Penrith players and things like that. He's going to be out for blood this uh, this grand final I think coming up. And he but he stood up in this game against the Cowboys, scored a couple of tries, was in the perfect position, crashed over the line, everything you want your front rower to do in an NRL game, he did. Uh, and yeah, it's... It, the Cowboys, uh, look, they did everything they could, they've had a tremendous season, and they should feel no shame at all about uh, bowing out, given where they were last year. Uh, but, you know, obviously, I, I, I think they'll all be very disappointed. Uh, a home semi-final or preliminary final, you expect to make the big dance at least. Yeah. Like if they got to the big dance and lost to Penrith, you could go, "Yeah, all right, this was this wasn't our year, but we we fucking we we did what no one else would have expected us to do to mm. get knocked out the way they did." I think they'll be be, be very disappointed, a hundred percent. And I think I think there's a lot of room to grow for them, and I think this, they'll they'll it'll be scary how good they can be in the next few yeah. years. I think with the, the talent they have, they've got. Lots of very young talent, Jeremiah Nanai, Ruben Cotter, like unheralded players before this season that going into next year, they have that extra experience uh, under their belt. Um, Valentine Holmes got an amazing skincare routine. Doesn't look like he's aged a day since he's <laughs> entered the NRL. Everything like that. They've got, some, they've got a good young half in Tom Dearden and an experienced half in Chad Townsend who are both uh, there on, for, the, for the next couple of years at least, yeah. I believe, on, on contract and things like that. Um, yeah, and Scotty Drinkwater is absolutely flying at fullback. So they've got all the pieces to be a successful team. Tamalolo is not going anywhere. So it's good. Yeah, yeah it finally feels like you know the Cowboys were always like, well, JT, the original JT. And yeah. Then once he left the the backup JT, the Tamalolo, it was like they're him, and that's it. Like you yeah. always kind of felt like he needed to do so much work. Now this year's showing if he can just be at eighty percent. Yeah. They'll be once they get him. Like again, I don't think this has been a hundred percent a JT year. Yeah. But I think now the pressure's been taken off. I think next year, watch out for Jason. To again, I think Todd Payton manages him really well. Yeah. Now. Like he goes, look, we've got you for this ten years. We want you to lead us to more of these preliminary and hopefully a grand final and a yeah, win. Hundred percent. So let's take the boxes when we're up by forty points, which they will beat some teams like that with the way they're taking weapons they have at their disposal. Yeah. We'll, we'll rest you, but I think yeah, he's going to have a big year for the next couple of years. Yeah. So that was the first preliminary final. Uh, the second final, a bit of, I think, probably fair to say, a bit of a bloodier affair with some of the um, tackles and, and chit-chat that went on that one. Penrith versus South Sydney. South Sydney got out to an early lead, uh, thanks to some Penrith errors, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, Penrith, like the Panthers, they are chased down the rabbits and devoured them. Um, a lot of criticism directed towards Cody Walker and Latrell for, for disappearing. I don't necessarily think that's fair. I think it's hard to be able to, to put your mark in the game when you're 
team is going backwards that much against such a stout parent front. And I mean, look, some of the best players in the game, like James Tedesco and things like that, they're not impactful every single game because of how uh, dominant opposition teams like parents are. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, uh, I think it's a bit of unfair criticism um, on some of the South players. Um, but, yeah, the, the South, South as a whole will probably be disappointed uh, with what they did, considering the effort they put in uh, the week before. Yeah. The momentum they had as well, the yeah. team that they, they'd been building, and it was like that this was... I Again, I picked them. I thought they were... I think mean, most people actually were like, if Penrith are getting knocked off, it's here. Like, yeah. This is the team yeah. not Penrith off. And it was like the fact that, oh, that was that's, that's what you gave us? Like, after man, 12 nil, 12 all, I was like, holy shit, like, this is what everyone expected. And then to have the second half they did. It's, it's, what's, what's huge as well is Alex Johnson not being in this game because he's such a try scoring weapon. And it's not even just his try scoring, it's the threat that he presents out in the wing that they have to account for. 100%. Right? And Richie Cannell is just not the same level of player. So. It's yeah. not even just that as well. He knows the structure. Yeah. And all. Every, I think he gives everyone a lift just being there. You know, 100%. it's like, oh, we've got Alex Johnson. Well, he scores at least a try game, so we're guaranteed a try. It wasn't yeah. And defensively as well. He's not known to, for his great defense, but I'm sure he knows the structure better than, than Richard Bernard yeah. does. And, and as well, like, you know, if you're talking about Cody, Walker, and uh, Latrell going missing, I mean, part, some of the biggest success of their game plan is working out how to get Alex Johnson the ball. That's what makes them look so good as well, yeah. is those combinations there. So, but yeah, overall, probably a little bit disappointing um, for South, but. Yeah, this is four years in a row, I think, they've been to a preliminary final or higher. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy to think about. You don't really think about that with, with Souths, but they yeah. find a way to, to get close. I mean, last year they made it to the big dance itself, but fell short there as well. But it's a pretty damn good run of form that South City's been on the last few years, the consistency that they've had. And to go as well, you know, go from Adam Reynolds to Lachlan Elias, to go from Wayne Bennett to Jason Demetrio as well, like... Pretty pretty bloody good effort to, to make it all the way to the preliminary final. Hundred percent, and and like we've, as we were talking again in our other podcast, you know you'd rather be a fan of South Sydney at the moment than of maybe the Gold Coast Titans yeah. or the St George of the Water Dragons. No, 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 it's a super dragons. All right, when's the last time you made a prelim final? Was it when you won it in twenty ten? Yeah, I think so. It might, yeah. be. <laughs> might be. We made it to uh, semi a few years back, and then the Bulldogs knocked us out because. Uh, Big fat fuck Greg, whatever his name is, nearly Greg broke Benji. Yeah, nearly yeah. broke Benji Marshall's ankles. So, oh, I see. so we really should have made it that year. But that, you didn't. no, that wasn't a prelim. That was a semi. But yeah, semi. we should have made it that year. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, but you didn't. No. When's the last time the Gold Coast Titans made a prelim? I don't know if we ever. I have. don't think you ever I don't have. Think we ever have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, that's a uh, yeah sign. Uh, yeah. The Warriors have though, and they support them as well. So, okay. um, two teams. It's it's easy to say that your team's made a preliminary finals when you support three different teams. No, I only support two, and I jumped on the Raiders bandwagon. Like, you support right. three teams. No, I don't. Yeah, well, I don't support the Raiders. I couldn't care when the Raiders play the Titans or the Warriors. I hope they lose. But everyone else. See, for me, see, we, we've... Just so you're like a tiered system, right? I have a tiered system. You're like it's the Australian voting system, right? You've got your preferences, right? Yeah. And it's like Raiders at three, Warriors at two, Titans at one. That's 100% it. Yeah. So then you support three teams. For me, it's just Dragons one and then everything else. I don't have a preference. No, no, no. You see, but see, I don't support three teams. I just support a team over another team. So, like, the Dragons are... And there's there's a few teams down the bottom. Sea Eagles are by far 17th team. Guaranteed. Yeah. I don't even... Don't even know who the half the Dolphins players are, but the Seagulls are the 17th team. Yeah. Now that you support the Dragons, the Dragons are 16th team. Wow. I don't really mind the Dragons, but now that... Well, just know, because it's me. Just because it's... Is that why you always picked against the Dragons this year? Yeah, I... Well, you were 50% right, 50% yeah. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was better. It was, it was I'm, glad, I'm, uh, I'm glad I stuck to that bandwagon and I got off my picking the Titans yeah. every time bandwagon because that would have cost me a lot more. Yeah, and I, committed to, I committed to supporting the Dragons every single game. Well, you, every if, single game. If you'd seen what the Titans were putting out there, I think you... If, if your Dragons were putting out what the Titans were putting out, I think you would have done But half the season, they were putting, putting out that mess of things. There was like a period where we lost like six games in a row or something out of it. We, we didn't win until August. Remember yeah, I, I know. That you guys weren't going to do that? We yeah, I know. Like, I, I put the hoodoo on my own team. Yeah. So, yeah. But right. I've been through pain, all right, last couple yeah. of years as a Dragon supporter as well. So, I and I would still, I still stick to my guns of picking them for every game because I'm a true Blue Dragon supporter. Uh, okay, that's good. But yeah. your tips will decline heavily. That's fine. That's, that's the issue. You know what? 
tips matter less to me than supporting my team. No, I still support the Titans. Yeah. I can pick against them. I just them support my team tips. harder hope, than you do. No, that's not yeah. correct. Because I pick against right. them to give them motivation. Because I know they're going to see it. I know all the Titans boys follow us. Mm -hmm. So I go, I'm going to pick against them, and they'll be like, well, he doesn't even sit there. He doesn't care anymore. Yeah. You know, well, well, yeah. yeah, well, I pick the Dragons for the same reason because they, they see this and they look and they see, they're like, poor Husey, having to sit on that couch next to Luke every week and cop it for supporting us. He's, but he still has faith in us. We, we have to go out and win this game for Husey, right? That poor, bearded 30 year old man <laughs> just lying in, lying in his sick bed, aka his office chair. Thinking about the dragons, thinking about a Zach Lomax one-handed flick pass, <laughs> just heading the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but thinking about it landing perfectly into the arms of uh, <laughs> Michaeli Ravalawa, oh, yeah. Michaeli Ravalawa running over two people and scoring. He believes in us. We can believe in ourselves, <laughs> and and that gives them the motivation. You know, so, okay. so that's why I pick the dragons. Oh, yeah. Okay, good, good to know. Yeah. yeah. So they, yeah. it's because they pity me. Because they I'm pity. pathetic. It's because I'm pathetic. That's why. That's why they look at me and they're just like, Jesus Christ, he's. To, we we've got to put something on here. Put just to, just to make his life a little bit better. Because God, it can't get much worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, deep. All right. Yeah. Mate. Um, well, shall we go back onto the main topic, which is the grand final? Yes. Now, an exciting the war in the West. I'd love to hear. Yeah, let's yeah. Hit us Everyone's the calling it the battle in the West, but it's not the battle in the West. This is round four. Yeah. These teams have met three times. Already this year, record stands at two to one to Parramatta. This is the war of the West right now, right? WW four is <laughs> what we'll put it out there as yeah. WW four, uh, it's going to be a hell of a game. I mean, look, we I, I did this before State of Origin three, right? And I laid out that there's four options for the for that State of Origin game, right? Yep. And I'm going to put out there that there's four options for this game mm -hmm. right now. And I think any result will be amazing for, for the NRL. The worst of these options, obviously, is Penrith getting a blowout win. No. But then you look... Which is highly likely. Which is highly likely. But what you have there, Nathan Cleary, generational player, ninth immortal question mark. A bit early to say that in his career, people will still say it, right? Cronk's already come out and said he's better than him. But as yeah. Three, three grand finals in three years, two victories. Pretty, un, pretty unreal, yeah. right? Two years in a row... Pretty unreal. Been a while since anyone's done that. Uh, you look at the you look at uh, the battle for the Australian number seven jersey in this last week. The Prime Minister's thirteen, Daily Cherry Evans, put on a great performance uh, when the PM's thirteen beat Papua New Guinea. For all those people whinging about Australia losing all that talent, look at the backup Australian players putting sixty three points on Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea, who actually had a pretty decent outing in the uh, rep, in the rep period mm -hmm. as well, and have got players like Justin Mullen playing for them. And yeah, you tell me about how worried we should be for the World Cup. Both of them look pretty good. Yeah, going to say nice run from them. Who does he play for? Them? Okay, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our best second round. Yeah. Where was that during the season? Well, he was. He was. He was yeah. one of the few. One of the few bright spots. It was him and Tito, and that yeah. was. A I, I will say, I remember hearing his name called more than just about anyone else, uh, other than Tino. Uh, a hell of a lot more than David Feeder. Um, then uh, yeah, so so that so that and then you know you look at uh, but the storylines as well on the Parramatta side of Parramatta get a blow up when you know Mitch Moses abandoned his family for this was it worth it? You know, <laughs> Brad Arthur still chokes in the big game. Brad Arthur's picked his son on the bench. He picked uh, Brad Arthur. Was his family more important than the grand final? Did this cost Parramatta if they had an extra front uh, an extra forward in that in that bench? Would Parramatta not have been too tired? Et cetera, et cetera. It goes on so on and so forth. Penrith win a close one. Uh, similar sort of storylines. To, if it's a blowout, but then you also get Parramatta came uh, so close. Is this the end of their championship? How how much how gutted will they be that this is the end of their um, championship window kind of thing? Um, there'll probably be some controversy about ref calls that'll go in there, etc. Yeah. etc. Parramatta get a narrow win. Oh, Insanity. Explosions. Ex explosions, right? <laughs> uh, Brad Arthur, after 36 years, finally leads Parramatta to uh, another premiership. Peter Sterling's miraculously grown all his hair back and everything like that. Uh, Mitchell Moses, greater than Nathan Cleary. Who will the Australian number seven be? Three-way battle then. Um, you know, uh, uh, Clint Gutherson finally proving his worth, his contract. He said, oh, although for me, he already has proven his worth, his contract, things like that. Regan Campbell-Gillard, revenge tour against his old club and the players that snubbed him for origin and things like that. You know, Parabatic going to blow out win. I mean, it, it, you know, Panthers overrated. Yeah. Parama 